Alright guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we are going to talk about Kane's LD weapon that just released in JP Defo. We're going to talk about why I feel like this is another LD weapon that should not be avoided because I have discovered a few things about this LD mechanic that Kane has now that you can actually take advantage of and make potential future Lufenia fights much much easier so we're going to talk about all that i recorded two gameplays for this video to explain the two things that i wanted to mainly talk about and of course we're going to go into the whole stats and everything and exactly what kane's ld weapon does so as always if you do enjoy the video make sure to hit that like button subscribe for future content let me know how you feel about kane either before or after this video and well let's jump right into it let's talk about kane's ld weapon so in this first party comp, you're going to see that I bought Terra and Shadow alongside with Kane. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to test out two things. I wanted to test out if the follow-ups do continue while Kane is in the air. And two, I wanted to see if Kane does provide follow-ups when Terra goes into her burst phase, which it actually does. The reason why I brought Terra and Shadow as well is because I wanted to take advantage of Terra and Shadow's LD ability where they gain free turns and they get added turns as well. So after I use Shadow's or Terra's LD ability, they give themselves about two or three uh, extra turns in front of the enemy, which in turn, after I do my attack, Kane will follow up with his follow up attack. So that's the reason why I wanted to go off with uh, with this team comp, at least for the first part of this video. Now, we're going to talk about Kane's LD weapon, which is called the Sphere of Ordeals and equips him the LD ability called Rising Drive. He has a max usage of three uses. It recovers Brave to himself based on 100% of his own attack. It is a five hit range Brave plus HP attack and it deals 100% HP splash damage to non-targets followed by a three hit range Brave plus HP attack dealt three times with 180% stolen Brave max Brave overflow. It grants him four stacks of the power of the dragons special effect to himself and it recovers one usage of jump three and gunnier if i pronounce that incorrectly i apologize ahead of time after you use his ld ability with no action delay so he basically just goes right after you use his ld ability his special effect of the power of the dragons it increases by one stack after his own turn so even if you don't use his ld ability and you use his skills every time that you use his skills his power of the dragon stacks continues to go up up to four stacks now after that with the special effect what he gives to himself and it does not increase based on the stacks he gives himself a 40 percent brave damage delta when against a single target he gets a bonus of a 20 percent brave damage dealt up 30 percent stolen brave max brave overflow limit up increase and a 20 percent hp damage dealt up when he reaches four stacks his brave attack turns into the double jump or i guess i believe some people uh call it the w jump if i'm not mistaken uh the double jump it recovers brave to himself based on 50 percent of his own attack it jumps into the air until his next turn so basically he stays up in the air the entire time until he actually uh and until his turn actually comes up and then he act he finally jumps down it fills his own recast gauge which is his ex by 20 percent it extends the duration of his own existing buffs by one action and he has a high action delay it will not add to the total turn count except for summon phase and friend support while in the air he is unable to receive any effects from enemies and or allies he evades all incoming attacks even ones that are guaranteed to hit will not consume brave when hp attack is used and it triggers the lancet whenever an enemy or an ally acts the uh the lancet it triggers the following attack right before the next turn so it is an aoe hp attack plus a three hit aoe range brave plus an aoe hp attack dealt twice and it deals split hp damage 
When against a single target, it increases brave damage still by 60%, which is nothing new. Uh, allows for 150% max stolen brave, max brave overflow. And then, after his last HP attack, he recovers brave to the party based on 20% of the total HP damage dealt to the target. He cannot initiate chase sequence while he's in the air, and it reverts power of the dragons back to zero stacks where you will have to build them up again. The Lancet is a three hits AoE range brave plus AoE HP attack, and this is the uh, the follow up attack that he does whenever the, an enemy or an ally uh, does any type of action, and it deals split HP damage. It allows for 120% stolen brave, max brave overflow, and it cannot initiate any type of chase sequence. So, uh, one of the things that I did want to bring about with this ability with this LD ability because this is something that we have not had before. But the thing is, though, I feel like JP Default Square Enix is really trying to just make this game a little bit extra fun. And here is why. And we're gonna switch over to the other gameplay because I wanted to uh, show I, I I wanted to show off the uh, an example as to why uh, I feel like this is an LD ability that should not be avoided. So in my reaction video, I mentioned that it would be a good idea to give Kane Celeste's calls because Celeste does have that debuff, that framed lock debuff, which makes the enemy focus on the call user. But in this case, it would be Kane. But then I thought about something else. I thought about, well, what if I bring a call ability that has a very short duration? Like take example, Iroha, who with her call ability basically makes it so that whenever you do any type of HP damage, you do get a good amount, or you get a certain amount of brave back uh, to yourself, or, you know, based on whoever it is that you're using on your team comp, right? So then I thought about, well, what if I equip that to Kane, and that way that effect could last forever or until Kane returns back onto the ground? So then I thought about something else. I was like, okay, that we could take advantage of that because if we use another call, which is Ktif, if, you, if you're not too familiar with Ktif's LD call, basically what it does is that every single hit that you do while Ktif's LD call is active, you gain yourself a, a an amount of break back and it keeps stacking over and over and over on every hit that you do. So you're not always gonna be doing uh, zero brave damage to start off with until you unleash an HP attack. Every single hit that you do, you will be having some type of brave active that you will be getting back. So then I thought about this and I was like, wait a second, I could actually take advantage of this and potentially give Kane LD calls that are really, really good that we wish we could have a longer action duration or a longer call duration like Ktsif, like Iroha, and probably a couple that I can't think of on the top of my head right now, and take advantage of that effect while Kane is in the air. And then with the right team comp, like, like let's say Terra, right? If uh, or anybody that is able to like delay the enemy or take advantage and give themselves extra turns, right? So uh, Terra is a good option. Shadow is a good option. Uh, Lightning, if you keep spamming her LD ability, is another good option. Basically, anybody that makes it so that it it will prevent Kane from not getting his turn to make it so that he returns back to the ground. If you can somehow make a the right party comp so that Kane can remain in the air, you are still getting the LD call effects from Kane uh, for, for whatever LD call that Kane used while he is still in the air and you're still getting the follow-ups, that's a very nasty combo, and you can do so much of that. And, and also think about it this way. What if we get some stronger LD cards in the future, and we could continue to bring Kane for future Lufenia fights? Like, let's say if there are some calls uh, that uh, that will help you deal extra damage. Like, like let's take example Kurosami, right? Kurosami is, not, uh, is another LD con that you can equip to Kane, and you will get that weakness effect, so that that way everybody in your team con will be doing some good damage. There's, there's many, many ideas that you can do 
because of this new mechanic that Kane has. And I feel like, uh, I, again, I feel like it's it's an LD call, uh, an LD weapon that should not be overlooked when this arrives to Global Oppo Omnia. Now, not only that, but if I have not mentioned it already, but his LD follow-ups do activate while in burst phase. So anybody uh, anybody that you are going into the burst mode, which is uh, perfect example right now, you're going to notice you, you're going to get those follow-ups, and those follow-ups are going to be really, really, really good. So that's why I, I personally feel like Kane is an LD weapon to definitely not look uh, not look over to not uh, it, it's one to consider actually picking up and not skipping or maybe not like not waiting until it gets re-released uh, once again so uh, that's why I feel like uh, it, it's an LD call to really really consider picking up in the future and and again there might be some LD calls later on in the game where it could potentially become even more busted where it has that short action duration and you can use Kane to extend that as well. So, it, you know, it's some ideas to consider. Uh, you know, if there are any other LD calls that, that I, I, I'm going to look into it a little bit more, of course, and do some like testing and figure out what is the best possible way to use Kane where you can take advantage of whatever LD call he has. And at the same time, you are dealing damage. You're doing whatever it is that you have to do to beat said Lufenia plus fight. So uh, let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about it. But in my opinion, though, uh, I, my, for, from what I have experienced so far with Kane, it's an LD weapon that I do not regret pulling for because it, it, it really, really is a good one. And it's 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 one to highly consider uh, for the future for, for global players who are, are, are watching this video. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know uh, if there's any other potential nasty things that we could do uh, with Kane, with Kane's uh, LD ability in uh, in Opera Omnia. But uh, other than that, though, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. And then we'll catch you guys in my next video.